Hello everyone! In this video we are going to be stress testing sector with a 16 meters squared terrain, adding loads of trees, game objects and details to our terrain. We're also going to learn how to configure and optimize our project to achieve a solid frame rate. So let's get started! In this project I'm going to be using four assets from procedural worlds with all of their dependencies installed. Gaia to generate and paint our terrain, CTS to enhance our terrain textures, Gina to spawn more trees, game objects and details onto our terrain, and Sector to optimize our terrain by world streaming. First, let's go to the Gaia Manager by opening up Window, Procedural Worlds, Gaia, Show Gaia Manager. If there are any dependencies, please install them. With our terrain size, we are going to go for the highest size available through the Gaia Manager, which is 16 meters squared. We are also going to set Linear Deferred. We are then going to create our terrain and show the stamper. Close the Gaia Manager, and now we'll be presented with our 16 meters squared terrain. Let's switch over to our Session Manager so that we can start to randomize our terrain. I'm going to play around with these settings a little bit more so that we can include some more interesting areas. Since our environment is quite large, being 16 meters squared, I want to include a little bit of islands, possibly a lake, a bit more mountains, a bit of valleys, a village area, and a ton of waterfalls. And let's just add these stamps. Now that we've added randomization to the session manager, I'm going to play the session. As you can see, Gaia has managed to generate this really nice looking terrain. Seeing as though the terrain is 16 meters squared, there are a ton of interesting areas to explore. Let's quickly start to add some textures, game objects and details to our terrain using the Gaia manager's spawners. Now that we have all of our spawners created, Let's click on the Coverage Texture Spawner and simply just click Spawn. Seeing as though our terrain is quite large, we might find it very beneficial to reduce all of the vertices we have by using the Terrain Helper to smoothen the terrain. Now what this has done is it's gone through and it's actually reduced a lot of the the edges that we've had, the really sharp edges, and that in turn will reduce the amount of vertices we have. And then later, less processing will be used. So it's created quite an interesting texture over the map. It looks really good because all of the beaches are set up, all the waterfronts, the cliffs, edges, these canyons, they're really nice. Moving right along, we're going to try and see if we can create some game objects using the coverage game object spawner. And the only change I'm going to make in this case will be the location selector. It will be set to random location clustered because I want to generate some kind of villages and stuff like that. And I'll leave everything else as default and I will click spawn. So what it's done so far is it's spawned all of these game objects around the place and these are supposed to represent villages. I don't think it's enough for this terrain because this terrain is 16k wide and I think we can do better. So why don't we just click spawn again on that game object spawner. That is definitely a lot better and it means that our player has a lot more areas to explore. Now I'm going to add some trees to our level using the clustered tree spawner. The only thing I'm going to change is the max cluster size. I'm going to set this to 200 and click spawn. And there we have it. We've spawned all of our trees in our 16k map and we are now ready to move on to details. So I'm going to start to add some details to our map by using the coverage detail spawner. I'm not going to change it much but just make sure that your location increment is set to 4 because we don't want them to be too close to each other. So then the next step is to select spawn. And there we have our details. So as you can see, Gaia spawned all of these grass elements and they're relatively close to each other and it really brings out the detail in the environment. So far, Gaia seems to be handling the environment no problem. It's very hard to notice any frame rate drop-offs. 
To push this further, I want to touch up and populate the terrain with even more game objects using the genus spawner. You can find the genus spawner in the game object, Gina, add spawner. There are some areas around my terrain that still have small amounts of trees, like this one. I do want to touch up those areas by adding a bit more trees, and to do this I'm going to use Gina. The Gina spawner needs to have a prototype, a spawn prototype. In order to do this, I'm going to attach a tree to it. So select add tree. Now that we have a tree selected, if I hold down shift and select anywhere on the map, it'll visualize exactly what we're going to be spawning. Now this area is quite small, so I might increase the spawn range. Now that the spawn range is larger, I'm going to update it by holding down shift and clicking. And if I do spawn something, I have to press control and click. It's only spawned one tree. If I do want it to spawn multiple trees, I will have to increase the amount of instances that I'm allowed to have. In this case, it's set to one in minimum instances and the max instances is st still set to one, which means that it'll only spawn one in this current zone. So let's increase the max and let's increase the min and it will spawn within that range of the amounts. Now that's a little bit too many trees. So I might actually undo this by holding down control and pressing backspace. Now, because I had Gina selected in the background, if you press control backspace, that's when it will actually remove something from your scene. Well, basically everything that you've spawned. Okay. So we need to edit this so that it doesn't stay too clustered. And the way we're going to do this is by increasing the throw distance. That's a bit better. I think I like that range and I'm going to go ahead and paint areas of my terrain with this in mind. So I've finished adding all my trees with Gina and I've noticed a slight frame drop off. This is normal because our terrain is quite large and there is quite a lot of trees. So the next steps to this is to check what the frame rate drop off will be when we add a player to our map. So I'm going to open the Gaia manager and I'm going to select three, create player. Yes. Sir. Now that we have a player in our scene, there's definitely noticeable lag. Upon entering play mode, I've noticed that the frames have dropped off significantly. They used to be at 70 frames a second, and now they've dropped down to roughly around 30. It gets worse when I move too because of culling. As I'm moving, you'll notice the frames drop, drop or dip down to eight to 16 frames a second, and it is unbearably slow. So there are so many ways that we can deal with this and one of the major things that we need to change with this terrain is we need to sectorize the terrain, which means that we need to, in, we need to perform world streaming. And that's by using sector. So to fix this noticeable lag, we're going to use sector to cut the terrain. So go to window, procedural worlds, open up sector and go to the terrain window. Now we're going to cut the terrain into chunks of 1024 by 1024. So I'm going to select the terrain and I'm going to select 16 by 16, which will cut the terrain into chunks of 1024 and then click sectorize. So our terrain has been sectioned off into all these little tiles. So we're going to add CTS to all the terrains by going to window, procedural worlds, CTS, add CTS to all terrains. Once all the terrains have CTS applied to them, we're going to go back to Window, Procedural Worlds, CTS, and we're going to create and apply a profile. And we clearly notice that CTS has definitely been added to our terrain. Before we can export our terrain through Sector, we need to disconnect the CTS profiles from all the terrains. So Procedural Worlds, CTS, disconnect all terrains. CTS has disconnected all of the profiles from our terrain. 
Now we're going to use the sector stream window to export all of the terrains. So in procedural worlds, go to sector, stream window, and export all sectors. You might want to make a backup just in case. So all of the terrains have been exported successfully and I can move my mouse a little bit easier without having latency. I'm going to have to import certain sectors at the beginning of the game so that way when the game runs the player won't fall through the world. So you select the sector that you want to enable and you click import. I'm going to do this for four of them. So there we have it. We have our sections of the terrain imported and the player is going to start somewhere around here. We're going to see if we can load and unload the individual tiles and hopefully the frame rate won't drop as drastically. So I've re-enabled my camera and I want to attach a script to it in order for it to load and unload all of the individual tiles. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to look top down for this and what I'm going to have to add to the player camera is a component called a sector region loader. You see that little box there? That is actually what is going to, the engine is going to use in order to load and unload individual tiles. So I'm going to use, or I'm going to resize this to go 1024 by 1024. That's a really good size because as the player moves around the environment, it'll load and unload the individual tiles um, by the same size as which each tile is. Uh, the other thing I want to add to it is a thing called a culling camera. And the culling camera will only draw certain things that are in front of the camera's vision. I'm also going to enable an editor so that we can see this working. So to summarize, what we've done so far is we've added CTS to all of our terrains. We disconnected all of the profiles from the terrain, which means that it bakes it down onto each of the tiles. We've also exported all of the tiles, except for the four tiles that the player will be starting on. We've also added a sector region loader component to the player, which is the player camera. Uh, we've resized it to 1024 by 1024 and we've added a culling camera to the player and we've also enabled cull and editor so that we can visualize if it works in edit mode. So let's test this by running the game. So upon first glance you'll notice that the frame rate has actually increased drastically and it's up by 70 frames per second. Our biggest problem before was the fact that whenever we moved it would cull new objects and it would cause the frames to drop consistently. As I move now, you'll notice there's hardly any frame rate drop. And everything is culling and drawing in the right way. You can also test this in the scene view by seeing what actually did draw. So as I turn the camera, you'll notice that certain scenes are enabling and disabling and you'll notice as the player moves around the scene individual tiles load and unload so our fps inside of the editor is really good but i want to show you what the fps would be like if it was in a build to do this we have to print the fps to the screen because by default, Unity doesn't actually show a screen similar to the game view where you've got all the stats. Lucky for us, CTS already comes with this by default in the prefabs folder. The FPS prefab, if you click and drag it in, will create this text element here. When you run your game, it'll show the FPS on the screen independent of the stats window. So with this in mind, Let's go ahead and try to create a build. Now before we create a build, we need to make sure that in the player settings, the individual setting which is called Optimize Mesh Data is disabled. Otherwise it'll take a much longer time to build our project, considering that it is a huge terrain. 
Next, we're going to go to File, Build Settings. Notice how all the scenes with the different chunks have been added automatically by sector. The only thing we need to worry about is to make sure that the sample scene starts at zero, because that is our main scene. Everything is going to be loaded and unloaded by sector, but in order for that to happen, Unity has to register it within the build settings. Then we're going to go to build and run. We're going to create a builds folder. And we're going to select that folder. This may take a while, so just give it time and eventually it'll build everything quicker the next time. Now that our build is done, let's click play. And as you can see, the FPS stays steady at 60. If I move throughout my level, and I reach a point where a new sector will load, you don't notice any kind of frame rate drop. That is amazing. And there you have it. That's how you create a 18K terrain with all these massive amounts of details and trees and have absolutely no latency. Thanks for watching and tune in for the next video.